My name is Ahmed, and in this mini course, we are going to study Puppet. So let's get started. All right, what is Puppet? Puppet refers to a language that describes how to get the machines to the desired state. It may also refer to the engine that is used to interpret and apply those instructions. So Puppet is another configuration management tool, just like Ansible and Chef, that we have studied earlier in this program. However, Puppet is a little more advanced than those tools, and as you're going to see, it is a little more complicated. And that is because Puppet is very well established. It is the oldest of those tools, and it is usually used to configure very complex environments that contains maybe hundreds or thousands of nodes connected together with load balancers and firewalls and network devices and so on. So Puppet is usually used in large enterprises with complex environments. However, in this mini course, we will have a brief look at Puppet. We are going to cover just the basics to give you an idea about what Puppet is, what it is capable of doing, and how it is different than other configuration management tools in the market. So a typical Puppet file, let's open a new file, may look like this. Package, if you are, for example, intending to install a package on a system, on a remote system, you will do it like this. Let's just uh, change the language to be Puppet to give you the correct highlighting. So package, then you open a pair of curly braces like this. And then you type in the name of the package, let's say NTP for network time server, then a colon. Then you start writing the different attributes that this package is going to have. The package here is called a resource. So this is called a resource. Then let's type the attributes that can be added to this resource. One of the most common attributes that are used in nearly all the resources that Puppet has is ensure. Ensure means just you are, as you can see, you are describing the state of the machine. You are describing what the desired state of this, of this machine should be. So one of the desired states that we want is to ensure that this package is installed. It's as simple as that. You're describing a machine state rather than writing a set of instructions or tasks to be performed. And by the way, this file, the file that holds the instructions for being applied on the target node or the target machine is called a manifest. This is another Puppet terminology that you have to be aware of. So file is called a manifest. And this is the file that contains instructions, typically a number of resources all right and as we said each resource may have one or more attributes like ensure so how can you use puppet or how can you apply different puppet configurations on the target machines well you have mainly two ways of using puppet either the agent master mode and in this mode you have a master server where a puppet server package is installed and on all the child nodes or order nodes that are going to be affected by this Puppet configuration are going to have the Puppet agent package installed. So just like Chef, when we used a Chef node where the Chef software was installed, the Chef server, and the client nodes used to pull their configuration off this server, the same way here in Puppet, we can use a master server and install Puppet server software in this master server. And on the rest of the machines, on the rest of the nodes, we install the Puppet agent software. The other way of using Puppet, which is the one that we are going to use in this mini course, is the masterless mode. The masterless mode, as the name suggests, you are going to have just the Puppet agent installed on the target machines, and you are not going to have a master server. So you might be asking, how will the machines be able to pull their configuration? Well, you can come up with whatever solution you want. In this mini course, we are going to use a Git server, so pull the configuration from a git repository for example this uh, i found that this is the most efficient way of pulling configuration you can use whatever tool you want like rsync for example or scp to pull the configuration of the master machine or of the server on demand or in a cron job or so on so let's get started we have had a quick introduction to what puppet is and how a typical manifest file can look like, what is a resource, what is an attribute. Let's jump into installing Puppet. Okay, 
So here we are in our DevOps E degree master folder. Let's create a new directory here and call it puppets. Okay. And inside this file, let's just have a copy of the background file that we have used in our chef previous uh, mini course. Let's just add this here. Okay. And as you can see, this is the file. We're going to make just some minor changes to this file. Let's change this to be puppet. This is the master machine or the server. I'm going to change its name to be puppet. I'm going to leave everything as it is. And we're not going to go yet through the rest of the machines, the database, the app or the web for the time being. Let's go to our terminal. Get inside puppet. Okay, we have our vagrant file. And let's just issue vagrant up puppet. Right, and once the machine is up and running, let's clear the screen and issue Vagrant SSH Puppet to get inside the machine as usual. All right, and in order to install Puppet, and although a Puppet package is available within the default repositories of Ubuntu, it is highly recommended that you use the repositories that are provided by the Puppet Labs or the Puppet vendor. So we are going to install a package that will supply or provide the necessary repository for us. Let's do that by using wget. And the package is located at https apt.puppetlabs.com slash puppet5, which is latest as of the time of this recording, dash release dash zenial dot dev. And notice here that I'm using Zenial, which, uh, which refers to Ubuntu 6, 16. We are currently using Ubuntu 17, but it will work as expected. Nothing is going to change. It's just the same package. It's going to work here the same way it did on Ubuntu 16. Nothing will change. Press enter. Okay, and we have the package. Let's use sudo dpkg-i. Then give it the name of the package, which is puppet 5 release Okay, and now the usual stuff, sudo apt get update to update the repositories since we added a new one. And finally, sudo apt get install puppet dash agent. All right, now puppet has been installed successfully. In order to double check that, let's just type puppet. Okay, and since we will have to re-log in to, because Puppet is uh, stored by default in slash opt slash Puppet Labs slash bin, which is by default not in the default path of the current user, so we'll have to re-log in again if you want to use Puppet without supplying the full path of the command. So for the time being, let's use the full path, dash dash version. Okay, 5.5.1 is the current version. If you want to double check, let's just exit login back again and now i have reloaded the profile i can easily do puppet dash dash virgin and it's going to give me the same output version 5.5.1 let's now write our first manifest in this mini course for puppet and to do that we are going to just add a new directory in our puppet directory let's call it manifests all right and inside it let's create a new file let's call it apache.pp pp is the default extension for puppet manifests and again we're going to use the package resource our package name is apache2 because we're going to do this on ubuntu then a colon then inside the stanza we are going to add our attribute which is ensure and ensure installed is the value and optionally we can add a comma at the end of each attribute even if it is the last attribute and this is a recommended approach because more than often you are going to need to add some attributes at the end of the stanza like for example something like this notify for example something some service or something like this, okay? So you will need to add this here. Forgetting to add a comma here is going to give you a syntax error when you 
try to run this manifest. So a good recommendation is to always add a comma at the end of each attribute so that if you want to add more attributes, you will not be missing a comma at the end of the previous attribute. Okay, let's write our second resource in this manifest. It's gonna be service. And I guess you know by now what a service is. I've seen that before in Chef and in Ansible. Apache 2. And of course, the service needs to ensure that it is running. And optionally, we can also say enable is true. Okay. Of course, this is somewhat self descriptive. We are ins instructing Puppet to ensure that the service that is called Apache 2 is running and also it is going to be enabled so that when the system boots it is going to be started automatically. All right. So how can we apply this configuration to the current machine? How can we use Puppet to apply this to the current system? Let's go back to our terminal. And if you want to apply a Puppet manifest, all what you have to do is issue sudo and sudo here is needed because we are going to install and enable a service or a package on Ubuntu, so you need to have root privileges for this. And then pop it, apply, then give it the path of your manifest file. In our case, it's located in slash vagrant, slash manifests, slash apache dot pp. Press enter. All right, and now Puppet has completed its run. If I issue ps-ef and I grab Apache, I'm gonna see that I have the, the service up and running, so it has installed and enabled the service just as the manifest file instructed it to. All right, but through the rest of this mini course, we are going to place our manifest files in a different location, which is the default location for Puppet files. It's located here, slash etc, slash Puppet Labs, code, environments, production. And as you can see, the production by default contains some already created directories and files for you, like the manifests directory, the modules, the camel, data, we're gonna have a look at those later in this mini course. Let's have a look at the manifests directory. Okay, it's empty. We are going to add our manifests to this directory, which is the default directory for Puppet manifests. All right, so let's move on now to creating our Git repository on this master server. What we are going to do in this mini course is that this Puppet machine will not going to be a Puppet Master. It is just going to have the Git repository installed and the rest of the machines or the rest of the nodes are going to use this repository to pull the configuration files or the manifests and apply them locally using the Puppet apply command. I could have used a third party Git repository like GitHub for example. But for the sake of learning something new and because not everybody is comfortable with the idea of storing their configuration on a public GitHub repository where it is publicly available for the world, of course, you could opt for a private repository and pay the fee for that. But let's learn something new. Let's learn how to create a local Git repository on a Linux machine. So let's have a look at how we can do that. First thing, we are going to have a look at slash opt or whatever path you want to work with. So the first step is choosing a path. I have chosen slash opt and I'm going to create a directory for my puppet repository or my repository, whatever it you want to name it. I'm going to call it puppet dash repo. Of course, you will have to use sudo for that because the slash opt directory is owned by root and it is only writable by root. So in order to avoid problems arising from this, we are going to sudo change ownership of the directory that we have just created to be owned by vagrant group and vagrant user puppet repo. So now I can go as a vagrant user inside puppet dash repo and do whatever I like. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna issue this command git in it. We've seen that before. If you are following along and if you have followed the git mini course in this program, we have issued before the git init and we have learned that git init command is going to create an empty repository in the current directory or in whatever path you pass it to this subcommand. However, in this specific case, and since we are going to create a Git server, we are going to add the following options, dash dash bear, dash dash shared. So what are those options and what do they do? Sorry, it's dash dash shared. Okay, and now initialize an empty shared Git repository in slash opd slash puppet dash repo. Let's have a look at what 
have been added to this repository or this directory since we issued that command. All right, as you can see, it has all the contents of a typical .git directory or subdirectory. These files and directories are supposed to be placed in a .git directory. If you have been following our git class, all those were placed in a directory that was called .git. But in this case, and since this is our Git repository, this is where we are going to push and pull files from and to, this directory is not going to contain any files, it's just going to contain these data. And it's going to store our files in binary format. This is going to be clearer as we move along. Now let's move to the next step. The next step is to start our Git daemon. And the Git daemon is a utility offered by Git, like this. You are going to start a daemon that is going to accept requests from remote hosts over the network to push and pull files to this repository. I'm going to create something just like GitHub. However, it's, of course, it won't have a web interface, but it will be a Git repository that is available on the local network. So in order to do this, I'm gonna issue the following command, git daemon dash dash reuse, eddr dash dash base path, and give it the path where all your Git repositories are going to reside whether it was the Puppet repo or any other repository that you intend to expose or to export, this is your root path of all Git repositories. And then dash dash export dash all and then dash dash enable equals receive fac. Otherwise, you are going to create a read-only repository. You're not going to be able to accept push requests. So in order to enable your clients to write and to push the files to the repository, you will have to use this option, dash dash enable equals receive pack. Of course, we are working in a closed network and a trusted network, so we don't have any problems enabling our clients to push and to modify the repository contents. Of course, if you are on the internet or if you are on an untrusted network, you will have to take the required precautions. All right, now if I press enter, this is going to start the Git repo. Now it is running, now I can clone the repository, pull and push whatever files I want from this repository. But in order to facilitate things for ourselves, we will need to add this to a service so that we can control it using the systemctl command. So let's open a new file in slash etc slash systemd slash system slash gitd. We're going to create a file that is called gitd for git daemon dot service inside this file seen this before when we were discussing how to enable node to be working as a service and use the system CDL to start it and stop it. Let's start adding our content. So unit, which is the first stanza. Description, let's give a quick description. Git repo server daemon. Then the service itself, exec start. Just give it the path to the binary, which is slash usr slash bin slash git then the sub command daemon just the same as we did before I'm gonna write it quickly right and then install wanted by get tty dot target default instance tty1 these are just to ensure that the service is going to run smoothly without problems Save and let's um, let's test our newly installed service by running system cdl start git d. Okay, and we need to authenticate. This has to be done using sudo. And let's now ensure that the service is running. Okay, now the service is running in the background. If you want to make sure, let's just try to clone it just using this same machine. And I'm gonna go to another machine. Just use this one. It's gonna suffice. If I type git clone, then I will have to specify the address. And since I'm using the git daemon, so I'm gonna use the git protocol. So git, then the IP address of the current machine 192.168.33.100. Then the address of the repository, which is puppet dash repo. Okay, and this output confirms that I have successfully created a git repository. If I ls now, I'm gonna see that I have puppet-repo inside my current directory. Of course, it's empty, but I can ensure that I can push test.pp, for example, 
git add test pp git commit dash m test commit okay i'm going to in i'm going to have to configure my credentials okay let's do that quickly can leave it like that vagrant and let's run that again okay now i can easily get push like this and it's going to push it to my repository if i clone this again in another directory let's say in slash temp git clone git 192.168.33.100 slash puppet dash repo now if i get inside i'm gonna see that i have my test file there available however if i go to slash opt slash puppet dash repo which is the repository itself i'm gonna find that the contents of the directory are just the same as we have mentioned it will not change it will change actually but it won't store your physical files it's just going to store the changes that are that have been made to your repository and all those changes are going to be stored in the form of binary format so you won't be able to view them by just typing ls-l okay so that is what we were intending to do which is to create a git repository on this machine and this repository is going to be our central server or our central location for all the manifests the files the data the variables and everything we are going to work with in this mini course in the coming lectures we are going to start configuring our nodes in a way that they are going to pull those configuration settings or those manifests out of this git server on a periodic basis using a cron job and we are going to do this also using a puppet manifest so until next lecture take care